When will the West End see this historic abandoned school building transformed into a set of lofts? That's what an out-of-state developer is trying to figure out as he's headed to the drawing board to outline costs and of course construction plans. You know, and another entity was originally uh -huh. supposed to create luxury housing, but now this developer is taking over with a more conscientious approach. Our Monique John has the story. The Heberly School was acquired about two years ago by Golan Marome, the head of Zada Development. It hasn't been in use for quite some time. So we just really want to breathe some life into the community. Heberly, built in 1929, was by then a condemned building and sold alongside a number of other Cincinnati public schools in auctions dating back to 2009. Marome, a New Yorker, is now the sole owner of the building and has a new modest vision to turn it into loss for young artists. Right now, what I think that the community is lacking is not necessarily affordable housing, but maybe something, you know, a step above that, you know, so housing that's unassisted, but that's at, at a price point that people that are starting their lives, um, you know, can feel comfortable. And he declined to give figures as to how much the project might cost or the estimated rates of the lofts, saying that's still to be determined. It's also still uncertain when development will start, and Marome says he'll have to reapply for the tax credit he previously received from the Ohio Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program. That's because he's departing from an earlier vision from another, now defunct entity to turn the building into luxury housing. But he says he'll maintain the building's architecture and convert classrooms into units. The reinvention of the historical building feels like a nod to the cyclical gentrification that has come to shape the West End's legacy. Affluent white families moved to the hillsides for nicer homes through new transportation options in the early 1900s, making way for thousands of southern black migrants to settle in the area. But urban renewal projects like the 1950s construction of the I-75 and the current work on the FC Cincinnati Stadium have become notorious for pushing out the West End's vibrant community and vulnerable black families generations later. Most communities want investment. They want their community to be improved. They want to see change and betterment, uh, but they don't want to be displaced. Robert Killens, the West End's Community Council president, says it will be crucial for the community to have a plan that will allow longtime residents to live comfortably alongside ones who are just moving in. He acknowledges that new amenities can not only mean displacement and higher rent costs, but also increasing property taxes that could put pressure on some homeowners. Like Killens, author and expert in Black Cincinnati history, Gina Ruffin Moore, says good things come with gentrification, but is leery of what major neighborhood enhancements like that of the Heberly School could mean for the area's future. The truth of the matter is that the West End won't be the West End 20 years from now. We have to preserve the history and the hard work of the people who established the West End. The West End won't even look like the West End anymore. New improvement plans making their way into a small, proud, yet in some areas, blighted and vulnerable community. West End, Monique John, WCPO 9 News.